Line Upon Line with Lawrence Yap is our senior pastor's 15 minutes devotional that will be broadcasted every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. in the month of August. Tune in via our link that you will be receiving through WhatsApp or go to Facebook page or our church website to connect. Hi, good evening. Tonight we are going to meditate on Psalm 23 for the start. Psalm 23 is one of the most read psalm and the favorites among many people. And of course, the reason is simple. Psalm 23 is so comforting and so assuring. As a matter of fact, it is being read both in weddings as well as even during funerals because the word of the Lord brings so much of comfort and assurance to the people. Let us start off with verse 1 even tonight. Psalm 23 verse 1 in the NIV version it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. In the message translation it says, God my shepherd, I don't need a thing. And then finally in the King James version it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, sometimes when we begin to read language like this, some of us may prefer languages like, oh, why wasn't it written, the Lord is my banker, or the Lord is my healer, especially in such a time when we are in need of these things. But my brothers and sisters, we must understand that the language that is being used here is a language that the author David the shepherd boy was so familiar with that even as the Holy Spirit inspired him he wrote it in the way of the language that he knows best and that is as a shepherd what was David communicating about God by using this symbol of the shepherd what does a shepherd do? Now, first and foremost, we must know that God says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, He said, He tends to his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. What a wonderful illustration of a caring shepherd, isn't it? Meditate for a while. What else does the shepherd do? If you will consider carefully, you will realize that first and foremost, a shepherd provides. The sheep needs provision and God knows. He provides food, he provides shelter, the basic necessities for his sheep. That is why when we begin to realize that God is my shepherd, we must also be assured that He is our Jehovah Jireh. He is always our provider. Then secondly, I believe you will agree with me that a shepherd protects. The shepherd defends the sheep against wild animals. As a matter of fact, the shepherd's staff the way that is designed in those days serve two purposes. Firstly, it defends. And secondly, by the design of that star, which is like a hook, it is meant for the purpose to bring back that sheep that may have gone astray and may be putting itself in danger as it walked near the cliff. So you can see how God is our protector too, like the shepherd who protects. Then, thirdly, the shepherd points the way. That's right. He leads sheep when they are confused and when the sheep don't know which way to go, which is very typical of sheep. That is why the Bible have a lot of description about the sheep without a shepherd. The sheep cannot be able to go around without a leader. And sometimes when you apply this to our life, 
that it's true. We have so many options, so many decisions and choices that we have. But we praise God that we have a shepherd that as we learn to listen to his voice, he points us the way. Now, interestingly, you will also be able to discover that there are other verses that describe the shepherd. And I would like to point out three very important and relevant titles that the Bible gives about this shepherd. The first one is John chapter 10 verse 11. John 10 11 reads, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now think about it for a while as you pay attention to this verse. Jesus is called the Good Shepherd. Now, why was he called the Good Shepherd? You will come to realize that he is given the title the Good Shepherd because he laid down his life. For what purpose? So that he can then, through his precious blood, save us from our sins. That all of our wrongdoings of the past was washed by the blood that was shed. Jesus, in fact, said it to us through the words that while we were yet sinners, Christ has already died for us. He has already an answer for our past. And this is so important because our past can haunt us. It can stifle us. It can condemn us. It can even cause regrets and fears and therefore, as a result, it stops us from making progress or even stops us from realizing the potential that God has given to us. So as a good shepherd, we praise God, He has taken care of all my past, that I do not need to feel condemned and do not need to feel regretful because the Lord, the Good Shepherd, has taken care of my past through His precious Holy Blood. Then the second verse is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. And this is what it says. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Why is Jesus called the great shepherd? Because he has risen from the dead. That is why he is called the great shepherd. He is known the great shepherd because he is not only the God of the past, but he is also the God of the present. He lives among us. He dwells among us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it wonderful that we have the Great Shepherd who is helping us in our daily life? Number three, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Wow! Now, we hear the title, the Chief Shepherd. Again, let's ask, why is he given the title, the Chief Shepherd? He is known as the Chief Shepherd because he is coming again for us, as the scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the Chief Shepherd appears, when will he appear? He will appear in the second coming. In other words, my brothers and sisters, the Chief Shepherd has taken care of my future and your future too. That He has planned for us eternity. He has planned for us a life after our life here on earth. A life which will have no ending. The eternal life that's going to be spent with Jesus Christ where there will be no tears, no pain, no sin that will ever be able to come near us. My brothers and sisters, isn't it so wonderful for us therefore to understand what David was saying when he said, The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall lack nothing. What else do I need? What else do I want? When this good shepherd, this great shepherd, and this chief shepherd has taken care of my past, is taking care of the present, and is taking care of my future too. May the Lord help us and may the shepherd of our life bring great comfort to our hearts and direct us in our daily life. Let's pray together even right now. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Tonight, we thank you that we can come to your word, precept upon precept, line upon line. And Lord, I ask that your Rema word will bring about comfort to our hearts, will bring about direction to our lives, and bring about healing to our bones. I pray, O God, that even in the midst of all that has happened throughout the past months, O God, Lord, we give you all the glory because we want to stand upon your promise that says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and God will work all things together for the good of those who are called according to your purposes. I pray for my brothers and sisters, give them good health, give them good sleep, peace in their hearts, O God, even in the midst of all the shakings that are going around. I pray for your blessings to be released upon every businesses. I pray for your blessings and favor to be upon every career. And for those who may be looking for new opportunities or even new jobs, oh God, I pray that you will open the door for them. I pray for those who are students, oh God, that they will be focused, that even in the midst of various disruption, but yet their mind is stayed on thee, O oh God. Father, I pray that you will give good health to each and every one of my brothers and sisters. Bring healing, O oh God, to each and every one who are in need of this. And Lord, that indeed we acknowledge you, that you are our shepherd, and we shall lack nothing. Thank you, Father. Through Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen and amen. And may you have a good night's sleep. God bless you.